Patriot Prime Reviews is a channel for adult collectors and may not be suitable for children under 13 years of age. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey, what's going on guys? Patriot Prime here once again with another Transformers review. But before I get started, I need you guys to do me a favor. If you're watching this video right here and are not a subscriber of Patriot Prime Reviews, please hit that subscribe button right now. It won't cost you a thing, but will help me and my channel out tremendously. Also, make sure and visit my sponsor, ToyHacks.com. ToyHacks provides reproduction and upgrade decal sets for Transformer toys from Generation 1 to the latest modern figures. Make sure and stop by the ToyHacks Armory, where they can equip your figures with new weaponry in multiple colors, and Toy Stages provides backdrops for figure displays and photography. Each purchase with Toy Hacks earns you RoboSense that can be used for future purchases. You can check your balance anytime in your cart. Toy Hacks is a company run by collectors for collectors. So check out ToyHacks.com and make your collection stand out from the rest. And tell them Patriot Prime sent you. Now, on to the review. The featured bot in this video comes from the Transformers Buzzworthy Bumblebee line, Worlds Collide 4-Pack. And I gotta give a huge shout out to my buddy Brad, who found this set for me in Texas. He sent me a quick message saying, hey, I just found the Worlds Collide 4-Pack, do you want it? And I'm like, hell yes! Sent him a quick PayPal transaction, and two days later, this is in my hands. Now, the main figure I wanted out of this whole set was Nemesis Primal here, but this is a pretty good deal for $84.99, which is retail price. You get the $30 Primal, $20 Fangry, $20 Bumblebee, and $20 Black Arachnia. So it, it's not a bad deal for these figures. Granted, <laughs> do we really need another mold of Cliff Jumper there, who's now Bumblebee? So real quick, let's take a look at the packaging. You've got Buzzworthy, Bumblebee, Worlds Collide, all the figures are here in robot mode. And what's cool about this packaging, or a little bit different, is the front has plastic, but the top in this honeycomb design has holes in it. So you can kind of stick your fingers right through there. Now there is something rattling around in here, but if you look through the top, there's a sealed section right here. So I'm assuming that's yeah, that sounds like instructions, maybe a couple of the uh, accessories, but we'll find out when we open the packaging. Side of the box, you've got yellow Autobot logo, there's Bumblebee on this side, and back of the packaging, you've got all the figures in robot modes and vehicle modes. Now, what I'm going to do for this review is I'm going to break this down into four different reviews, one per figure, because this is a big set. I really don't want to make a really long video, so I'm going to break it down. That way you guys can watch the review on whichever figure you choose. And for this review, we're going to take a look at Fangry. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this package cracked open and check it out. And welcome to Patriot Prime Reviews. <laughs> Now, once you get Fangry all opened up and out of the packaging, you'll see he does come with an instruction sheet. And as I said in my Nemesis Primal review, this instruction sheet covers all four figures. So it is one giant sheet of instructions. And then, of course, you get Fangry himself. And that's it. He didn't come with any accessories whatsoever. Now, first things first, this guy is loose as shit. It is absolutely ridiculous how loose this figure is. Now, all of the looseness is from the waist down. Of course, there's some jokes right there. But yeah, the knees are loose, the thighs loose, this little section right here that holds the feet in. It's pathetic. So I'm letting you know about that now because I guarantee this figure is going to fall over during my review. The upper body, not too bad. The arms are tight, biceps are tight. I mean, everything's good. Now, another loose thing is this right here on the back of the figure. The wolf monster head 
this is really loose. It's like this arm that's pinned in was not made big enough. I mean, that just flops around too. So yeah, right off the bat, I've got a major complaint with this figure. So stand up there, damn it. Ah, I knew it. And I'm not even going to edit this out. I just want to show how floppy this guy is. Let's just bend him down a little bit. Now, when I first saw Fangry advertised, I thought to myself, that looks like the Titan's Return Grotusk mold. And here's Titan Returns Grotusk right here. And I'm right. There's a lot of parts that are shared with Grotusk. Taking a look here, the entire upper body is the same, except for the center chest section. That's completely different. Down here, the crotch pieces are different. The thigh sections are different. Let's see, lower legs, they're the same. The forearms are the same. And the shoulders are different. So there's a lot of pieces borrowed from Grotusk here. Now, if you want to see a funny video, I'm going to link my review of Grotusk right up there in the corner. That was my third review. So if you want to see me when I didn't know what the heck I was doing, there you go. So we've established the body that Fangry here is designed from and his looseness. Let's go ahead and take a look at the figure. I mean, the figure itself doesn't look too bad. I mean, it's very G1 accurate. I love the head sculpt. Also very G1 accurate. It's got the speed, strength, and intelligent decal, or not decal, that's actually a paint application right there. Once again, very reminiscent to G1. Purple Decepticon logo right there. A little bit of blue paint down on the knees. So the figure looks really good. And I like the fact he has wings now. In G1, his wings were only used in beast mode. And in robot mode, they became a shield. So now let's bring in, stand up. The original G1 Fangry to compare. So almost the same size. So as you can see here, very, very faithful homage to this Generation 1 toy. Now I've got a few extra decals on my G1 because he was very plain looking, even with his official decal. So I just put some Toy Hack scraps on him. I think he looks really good. He's got a lot of nice throwbacks. You can see that little circle right there that's also here on the Buzzworthy Fangry. Got the speed, strength, and intelligent decals right there that match up. I also like the fact, if you look on Fangry's shoulders here, he has those spikes that the Buzzworthy Fangry has as well. So lots of nice throwbacks to the original Generation 1. One thing I do like that they changed up, aside from the wings, is Buzzworthy Fangry has the beast head on his back, where the G1, the beast head is hanging off his butt like a dingleberry. So, yeah, there's that. But I do wish that he came with a weapon. So this Buzzworthy Fangry has no weapon whatsoever. Now, this Fangry is also a Titan Master, or Headmaster, so you can remove his head right here, and if I remember correctly, Fangry's headmaster was named Briscoe. So there he is, looks really good, and we'll bring in Titan's Return Fangry, who is this little mini figure right here that turned into a version, a small version of Fangry, or he just flipped the head around, he turned into a dragon, but he also had the Titan Master head. So let's go ahead and get this pulled out and we'll compare the heads, go ahead and get this one transformed. So here is Buzzworthy's head and the Titan Return version. And it looks to be exactly the same. So no difference whatsoever as far as the head's concerned. But when you turn him into robot mode, the Buzzworthy Fangry has purple arms and a black body where... Titan's Return has black arms, and the entire body and legs are pink. And I do like the fact that Buzzworthy here has a painted face. So kudos to Buzzworthy for the Headmaster. That works. So let's go ahead and get the head put back on real quick, because I do want to go over articulation for this figure. The wings can flap. They can move back and forth. 
The head, of course, it's on a ball joint thanks to the Titan Master. It can do a complete 360. The arms can go up and down, do a complete 360 as well. If you move the wing out of the way, there is a bicep bend and bicep rotation. Nothing on the wrist. Down here, no waist articulation. And the legs, you saw, the legs have plenty of articulation. They can also go out and in. There's a knee bend and a kind of a reverse ankle tilt due to transformation. Now, let's go ahead and get Fangry transformed into his beast mode. And the first thing we're going to do is remove the Titan Master. So go ahead and pop him off. And this little section right here, you're going to bring this up, which reveals this black door that you're going to open up and slide in Briscoe right there inside the chest and just shut that up. So there we go. Next thing we're going to do is take the wolf head. Now be careful. It will pop off that so easy. And I'm going to bring in Grotusk again. Grotusk has that same connector point. Let's see. Right there. Same connector point as Fangry. I think they just didn't thicken up the tab there on the wolf head. So what you're going to do is bring this down and around and right there on the wolf neck, you got those two tabs. They're going to tab in right there on top of the speed, strength, and intelligent section. So there you go. You got the wolf head attached. Now what you're going to do is take the arms, fold in the robot fists, do that on both sides, and then flip up the beast hands. And now you're going to take the forearms and just rotate these around at the elbow or at the bicep and then just angle these up. So now he has monster hands. And about the only difference between the monster hand and the robot hand is these are open slightly and there's some texture. So now that's pretty much it for the upper body. Let's go ahead and do the lower body here. You're going to get these little tail pieces. Get these out of the way. You're going to swing the feet up and out. And you're just going to rotate the legs around. Now here on the back, there are, oh, let me show you here on the front rather. You see the tabs. You want to make sure and get those sections tabbed together. And because this figure is so loose, you really need to squeeze to get these good and tight and connected. So there we go. Go ahead and bring the tail pieces down and squeeze those together. Now you've got the beast leg sections. Go ahead and unfold the beast legs from the robot feet. Get those down. You got these little hip sections here. You're going to fold in and try to get these. You got these little tabs. Get the wings out of the way. Little tabs right there. You want to try to get these tabbed in right there underneath that to kind of hold it in place. It's really not going to hold very good. Go ahead and swing the beast legs around. And there we have Fangry in monster mode. And monster mode looks all right. It looks weird, but it's very G1, just like the rest of the figure. Now, unfortunately, these sections right here, these hip sections, super loose, just as bad as they were in robot mode, so they don't stay tabbed in very good. But, you know, it is what it is. I do like the looks of this guy. This Fangry is a lot more vicious looking than the original G1. I mean, in Marvel Comics, Fangry was badass, but the toy, the toy sucked. And there you have the original G1 Fangry. He just looks so damn goofy. His wings, his wing shield, just kind of plug in over the back of his head. So he actually looks like he has big ears. But man, what a weird looking figure. So the Buzzworthy version definitely outshines the original G1. So, I mean, I like the texture on this one. He's got great texture all over, good paint applications. And if you want to see my review on this guy, I'm going to put that in the link right there above. So bringing back in the Buzzworthy Fangry, let's look at some of his articulation. The arm articulation is exactly the same as robot mode. 
All you did was flip the forearms around, so no biggie there. I guess the fist can kind of move up and down, but that's due to transformation. The robot, or excuse me, the beast jaw can open and close. So I do like that, but it cannot turn. So open and close, that's all you got. Once again, no waist articulation whatsoever. The beast legs, they can move up and down. Actually, they could do a complete 360 if they could. And the forelegs can actually bend at the knee and at the toes. And I do like all the molded detail there as well. He's got lots of nice fur and he's falling apart. Like I said, you got to really squeeze this guy together to get him to work and just handle him. You see what I've done and he's already falling to pieces. Hadn't that sucks. It's so cool that we get a new, more modern Fangry opposed to the Titans return when we got a few years back, but I wish they could have spent some more time with him and fix these QC issues, especially, you know, I just reviewed Nemesis Primal and that guy was awesome. And then you get Fangry, which was another figure I was really looking forward to getting with this set. And he's just, he's a floppy mess. He looks good, but damn. And now for a quick size comparison, here is Transformers Buzzworthy Bumblebee Worlds Collide Fangry with Generation 1 Megatron, Generation 1 Fangry, and fellow Wolf Decepticon Titans Return Wolfwire or Weird Wolf. The Transformers Buzzworthy Bumblebee Worlds Collide Fangry is one mixed bag of a figure, in my opinion. For one, I absolutely love the G1 homages that this figure has. He's got the right color scheme, the right paint applications, the right look. This is a great fang. This is a great looking Fangry. I even don't mind the fact that they use the MonsterBot skeleton, more or less, because I thought the MonsterBots from Titans Return were really cool. I've got all three of them. But I wish they could have done something about the looseness of this guy. I mean, he's got all the stability of cooked spaghetti, and it sucks. I mean, it took me forever just to get him to hold this pose without falling over. I also wish he came with weapons. Fortunately, my good buddy Firetox sent me these visitor pistols because I was a big fan of the Series V that works for Fangry Perfect, plus he has a green face. So this figure right here, I'm split right down the middle on. I've reviewed Nemesis Primal from the set. I thought he was great. This guy I was looking forward to, but the looseness just killed me. Hopefully my next review Black Arachnia will bring the scale up just a bit. Now guys, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to click that bell icon to get notified when I upload new reviews, including that before mentioned video of Worlds Collide Black Arachnia. Once again guys, this is Patriot Prime, signing out. Hooah!